But you're having problems with school today And you don't know what to do or what to say So put on your glasses I'll teach your classes I'll show you everything you need But what you want to learn So put on your glasses I'll teach your classes I'll show you everything you need For what you want to learn Hey there class! Now today we're going to be talking about the application of factorial designs. Now the reason why we love factorial design so much is because it's very flexible and can be used on practically any research. And what's really cool is we can see how different factors interact and act with each other within the research. Now today we're going to be talking about three main applications of this research, so let's get started. So what we're looking at is research that I just made up. But basically what we're looking at is a relationship between the instrument a person plays and the amount of numbers from girls that person will get. Now our first treatment happens to contain people playing a tambourine. And the second treatment happens to be a uh, guitar. Our mean for a tambourine and getting phone numbers is an average of three girls per, per subject. And for guitar, it happens to be 15, surprisingly. But let's say that we had no clue the people who were playing tambourines were just nerds in general. They weren't even cool people. I mean, they look like this guy right here. <laughs> but uh, we wanted to actually change that. And we realized that the people who played guitar happened to be actually very cool people. They were, they were nerds who were playing the tambourine, and they were cool people playing guitar. So that probably might be the reason why the difference between these two treatments is so high. So what we want to do is we want to make two treatments. So we're going to add in a second factor. So just remember that. That's why it's called a factorial design, because there's more than one factor. So we're going to put the nerds right over here the cool dudes over here changes our research we gotta get rid of our old stuff so those means don't matter anymore we're gonna start making new means so let's say we conduct this research first we'll have the nerd play the tambourine so you go play that tambourine nerd you play it um the mean will will equal zero nerds aren't very good okay we'll have the nerds play the guitar but I can't do quantum physics and give you all you want, yeah. And what we'll see is a difference right here. We'll see that the nerds happen to have zero numbers when they play the tambourine, and they surprisingly get a good amount when they play the guitar, assuming these nerds know how to play guitar. What's next is we're gonna have the cool dudes go, and we'll check this out. Uh, so the cool dude plays the tambourine first, and he surprisingly gets five girls' numbers. He's pretty smooth, and tambourine's not very cool. <laughs> and then we'll have the cool dude play the guitar. Just give me your phone number, give me your phone number. And whoa, what's this? He happens to uh, have 25 girls numbers. That happens to show you how we can improve upon a previous research. I mean we knew that there was a relationship between the tambourine and the guitar and how many phone numbers they get, but we now further establish that no matter who you are it'd be a significant difference. It's more so in the cooler dudes because they're cool, but it still is a difference. Bunny hop. What we're looking at here is a hypothetical study I again created. What we're trying to find out is to see if stage two is more difficult than stage one. And it's a within subjects design, so this group of people 
happens to be the exact same people in this treatment as well as this treatment. Uh, as we can see, there's a dramatic difference between stage one time completion and stage two time completion. What this study concludes is that stage one is actually more difficult than stage two, but we never took into account if order effects might be actually affecting this score right here. Now, a main order effect that we'd have to think about is practice. Now, this was their first treatment, so they obviously got practice from here and would probably affect the score that happened here and maybe that actually made them better at stage two. To make sure that that's not a confound, we're gonna actually use order as a second factor. Now in order to do this, we must use counterbalancing, which if you are unfamiliar with, counterbalancing is rearranging the treatment orders. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this group and we're gonna split it into two different groups. Now that we split the groups into two, one half being group A and one half being group B, we will have these groups go about the treatments in different orders. Now group B is actually gonna do it differently. They're gonna go into stage two first and then they will move on to stage one. So the first outcome could be there are no order effects. So basically what we'll see is the numbers over here being exactly the same as over here. Even though they did this stage first, group B, the numbers are still exactly the same, it means they're independent of each other. Now the second outcome we can have is a symmetrical order effect. Now what happens here is we will see order effects. And so as they go through stage two first, so we'll just say that it took them five minutes over here, one minute over here. So if we were to graph this, it looks something like this. So here's group A, they started off at four, they went down to two, and here's group B, they went from one, they went to five. Now the third possible outcome that can occur out of this is a non-symmetrical order effect. And basically what happens is there is no significant pattern between these. There's not a direct difference or any relationship for these. So if we were to graph that one, it looks something like, it look a little more random. The midpoints don't match. So it, it's, it's a little bit more eccentric. All right, so those are the three basic applications of factorial designs. I really hope I didn't confuse you guys any more than you might be. But uh, I hope you guys liked it, and this one took me a long time, so just, uh, just know that. <laughs>